Hi, so in this video we're going to talk about the mechanism of formation of imines. And so the question I'm talking about specifically comes from Sapling Pre-Class Test 6, question 13. So the mechanism for imine formation falls into the same category as hemiacetal formation. So that is to say we start with an aldehyde or a ketone, a neutral nucleophile, and an acid. Now the acid is going to serve to activate the electrophile. So we have a first acid-base reaction. And now what we've done by protonating that aldehyde is generated an activated or stronger electrophile. In the next step of the reaction, the nucleophile reacts with that activated electrophile to generate a tetrahedral intermediate. Notice that all of the steps in this reaction are reversible. So there's our first intermediate. In the next step, what we're going to do is deprotonate this intermediate. Remember that H plus doesn't ever exist just on its own, so what we probably have in the solution is something like HCl. So when this actually reacted, we got the proton and it released something like a chloride. So we're going to use that conjugate base to deprotonate this intermediate and generate a neutral product. Notice that we've regenerated this strong acid, and that strong acid could protonate the nitrogen to give us back this intermediate on the left, or it could protonate the oxygen, and that's what ends up leading us forward in the reaction. So both can and will happen, but only one leads us forward. So in the next step, what happens here is known as a collapse of a tetrahedral intermediate. So the lone pair on the nitrogen pushes down. It's attracted towards this positive charge, but it can only get as far as making a carbon-nitrogen bond. And then this carbon-oxygen bond breaks, and the oxygen takes that lone pair of electrons. So that allows the oxygen to be neutralized, and in doing so, forms water. And we'll just have one step left in the reaction, which is going to be the deprotonation of that nitrogen. We can either use the water or that chloride that was generated up top here to act as the base. It's going to depend on whatever happens to run into that proton. And there we have the imine final product. So the imine is a, is a functional group that has a carbon-nitrogen double bond. Notice that this mechanism is very, very similar to hemiacetal or even acetal formation. Now the next thing that we can do with an imine is reduce it. So we can use a species known as sodium cyanoborohydride to reduce an imine. And what sodium cyanoborohydride looks like central boron, negative formal charge on the boron, and the sodium acts as a counter ion, although it's not directly bound to the boron because boron already has its full octet of electrons. Cyanoborohydride, just like regular borohydride, is, nucle is a nucleophilic hydride source. So that hydrogen with a pair of electrons can react at the carbon and then the nitrogen can take that pair of electrons. There already was a hydrogen on that carbon. Now it also has a second hydrogen, so it has been reduced. We have a negative charge on the nitrogen, and this reaction is typically done in the presence of an acid such as acetic acid, And that gives us the neutral final product. So we reduced an imine to an amine. 